my fellow Joy sister, our secretary, Linda Joy, leader, and I'm Colleen Joy, and this is Kim Joy, we're here, and we call ourselves the Joy Triplets here. <laughs> so it's a joy. Really, what we do is joyful, and Kim is going to share so much with us today. I'm going to turn it right over to her, and then as you want me to turn the TV on, get that right. Yeah, we do an introduction. My speech is not as well organized as Laura's, so give me no to go if I'm all over the place. But I mostly uh, have to assess level of interest. Uh, I have almost too much information to cover. Uh, but I wanted to start out with a thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I just told Colleen that it's like a whole lifetime has culminated to this moment. Um, I thought I would explain uh, my outfit because uh, people have been asking questions. <coughs> and, uh, I, you might not see, but I have Tibetan dancing boots that were made for me in Happy Valley in 1967. Wow. And um, uh, Happy Valley is the uh, very first Tibetan refugee camp uh, uh, where the Tibetans were kicked out of their homeland by the Chinese. And I have an actual black and white picture of the Tibetan school when it's, that has a group of men just sitting on the ground. During this trip, um, I went back to ha Happy Valley School and uh, across the uh, entrance, it says established 1960. I'm like, wow, I figured out the year that it started. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the, there is a theme throughout my uh, story about the Dalai Lama and about the Tibetans. So I, that's why I chose a Tibetan dress today rather than a uh, sari. Uh, the uh, dress, the chumpa, was made uh, by an Indian Dursi or tailor uh, in Missouri, uh, ordered by my mother in also 1967, probably. And so it, it fits. <laughs> <laughs> Reunion from this international school. There's a picture here. It's called Woodstock School. It has nothing to do with Woodstock Festival, <laughs> except for American People's Association. Uh, it is an international school, oldest school in the whole world uh, with American curriculum. So now, if if you ever have a chance to go to Woodstock School website, you venture into my personal e uh, Facebook, you'll see an international community traveling around the world, sharing wonderful pictures. And many of our alumni have become uh, diplomats and leaders of the world. Um, the other main theme, going back to the Dalai Lama, and the, my renewed interest in the Tibetan cause, is that, um, oh, too close. The Tibetans are, are still very impressed by the Chinese. Many people don't know that. Uh, what I didn't realize is how many Tibetans are actually self-immolating. They're burning themselves to death to bring the world uh, attention to the fact that they are really, really <coughs> wanting their own culture and their uh, religion. The some of the, what you'll see in the movie is of the. Uh, Norvinka, which is a center I had never heard of, but it's uh, the center of the Tibetan culture. Uh, about over 400 people come to this institute. There's trainings and workshops and people <coughs> on staff, and they're um, building, uh, making the statues. Um, if you had a chance to come up to see these pictures, uh, I have a lot of pictures of Norvinka because it's just absolutely fascinating. A very rich, beautiful culture. Okay, going back to my focus. The reason for my trip, as was conveyed in the message, was a 45th class reunion. Uh, my high school uh, graduation class of 1969 
meets about every 10 years somewhere in North America. And five years ago, this idea was born to go back to India, which is nothing new. A lot of classes do that. But oh, I had no idea what a challenge it was. It was we end up with 18 classmates who spent a week at the school. Um, a few of our teachers are there. Uh, we're very privileged that um, we have two classmates on staff. So of course they were some of the main organizers. And uh, then Paul Hamilton was the central figure. Um, some of these pictures are his. Uh, he had done on staff, developed cancer. Now he spent six months out of the year in Canada and six months out of the year uh, at uh, renting a house up on the hillside. So he was central. Um, there's a, he, he, and he's much computer savvy. So as in time, these, some of these pictures will be sent to his uh, Flickr account. Um, so we're have, bottom line, so we have much more of an online presence if people are at all interested. I took over 21, 2,100 pictures and they post. No. So it's uh, very rewarding, but challenging to try to narrow down. So what you're going to see is kind of summation. It would be like a vignette with some key moments that are not the ordinary tourist type events, like the Judge Mahal. You know, I've got some pictures here, but I prioritize the unique experiences. And, and focus on peace, because thanks to Citizens for Peace, um, the night before I flew, there was a goodbye party, and, which was really wonderful, with Swami Vilandana and his wife. Um, and so that helped me as I took pictures, you know, whether it's a peace pole or uh, the peace zone in Kathmandu is where we stayed. Uh, there's uh, many pictures uh, with the Gandhi Museum, uh, that where the Dalai Lama lives. That, that, that helped because it's really very overwhelming. There's so many places to see uh, India has such a rich culture. I also was challenged with a brand new smartphone. Wow. So most of these pictures are taken, are all of them really were taken on a smartphone and I got back and put them up on my computer and they're all on their side. <laughs> so then I had to figure out go to movie maker to rotate them and then put them in it. So I just want to let you know that it's not a polished video, but at least I got it done. <laughs> and okay, one more important thing to point out is that um, a key, a segue here, so I can talk a little bit about what I do, why I committed my life to peace. Um, every five years, our family would come to America. Uh, they, my parents were Methodist missionaries. Uh, went out during the, well, the war was still going on. My dad went by ship below Africa. So mom, with her with three children, stayed behind. And, um, but she went out after the war was over. And uh, 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 my twin brother and I were born actually in Atlantic City, New Jersey, when my parents were on furlough. But we were one years old when we went back to India. So, in 1963, I was 12 years old when our family, for the first time, went from India across the Pacific, stopping in uh, Tokyo and Hong Kong and Taipei and uh, Hiroshima. So I, we were very privileged to actually stay with Reverend Tani Moto, who happened to go to college with my father, and they were at this seminary together. Reverend Tani Moto was one of the five uh, witnesses of the Hiroshima bomb that John Hershey interviewed for the book called Hiroshima that opened up the world to the consequences. And it takes the long story of how I we registered that, that we actually stayed with them. And so we, but I had a, we had a whole day tour of Hiroshima. We did a lot more than just go to the museum. We heard his personal experience. So I really got it at a young age that nuclear weapons that we can never, ever use again. And so now I'm uh, the 
co-coordinator with Motoko Hathwaite, who was in Tokyo on August 6, 1945, concerned that, that, that Tokyo might get hit next. Uh, and so we, as uh, co-coordinators of the Michigan South and New Orleans campaign, I have information over on the table there. We are going to go to uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee in August, August 8th, the Saturday. And uh, we've got us, uh, the Detroit Area Peace with Justice Network has, has uh, booked a charter bus uh, and we're going to be car pooling. So it's always fun. Uh, there's a lot of puppets, music, and wonderful talks, and uh, there'll be something. The, the committee still hasn't figured out exactly what's going to happen, but usually, oh, like sometimes we've had a die-in, and then people stand up and say, I, I have a right to a future, or um, there might be a long line formed uh, along uh, from the Y-12 gate. The Y-12 is where the U.S. is um, refurbishing every nuclear warhead in the U.S. arsenal. They're planning a new uranium processing facility at $11.5 billion, that's tax money, and we are thinking that that's illegal, dangerous, and necessary. And we're protesting that. So there are, will be uh, often uh, people risk arrest. They have to, if they do, they have to go through training. And I make the decision that nobody on the bus to practice risks arrest. And, oh, and we have a fundraiser to, make, to help. Uh, so those who want to go on the bus who uh, can't really afford the $80, uh, and that's over there. Carolyn has a ticket to sell for a play on June 14th. Detroit Repertory Theater um, for $20, you can buy a seat. And the, movie, the play is called White Ash Falling, 9-11. And to make a long story short, you can see Carolyn has a new brand of hot off the press uh, artwork uh, showing the connection between Hiroshima and Nagasaki and 9-11. And all I can say is that that was my immediate association on September 12th. 2001, when I heard that uh, innocent civilians have been vaporized. So, uh, with that, let's, let's uh, watch your time. Um, people rafting. Did you? Did you? 
he's spinning a sugar, making sugar cane juice. And Rachel Lyon and I walked up 175 steps to get to the top of the Shiva Temple. Uh, this swinging bridge, there's, there's just two that connect um, across the river. It's supposed to be just for people, but there were motorcycles and cows. Oh. <laughs> and everything you can imagine. This is the uh, foothills of the Himalayan mountains called the Somalis. Now we shift up to northern India, and this is the Tibetan Culture Center. My friend Joy on the right, and the tour guide from who had just left Tibet in 2006. And this is the uh, some stupas facing all four directions. A little hard to hear, but he's talking about the symbolism of the colors. And see the prayer flags. Uh, painted rocks, uh, pictures of the Dalai Lama are almost all over the place. He says Bernard is a god king. He, uh, the Dalai Lama is now uh, retired uh, as far as making political decisions, but um, I think he's almost 80 years old. And uh, we'll be showing where he where he stays in the winter, because this is down in the valley. In, in the um, summers, he's up higher. I think that's about 4,000 feet. He was born at 35. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry, the, the volume is not good. Huge high plateau 
that is, has been taken over by the Chinese. So they have a lot of natural resources, especially fresh water, and the Chinese are not likely to give it up. But the Dalai Lama, as a you know, Nobel Peace Prize winner, uh, he chooses the middle way, and that is to uh, allow the Chinese to stay and to develop Tibet, but the Tibetan people are uh, wanting very much to have their own rich culture and their religion, freedom to practice their own religion. And he was pointing out how, uh, where the Dalai Lama escaped, and he came across the mountains in April 1959, and came to uh, the, the town where we had our school, uh, it, maybe about 15 miles away from Woodstock School, it's the refugee village where the Dalai Lama lived for a year. And this is a, there's no sound to these. These are the, the few pictures I could take at the entrance of the Gandhi Museum. I was actually looking for my father because dad, my dad was at the Mahatma Gandhi's funeral. Of course, there were countless people there. But you could actually hear his voice. Those are some of the uh, spinning wheels. The Leeds Red Car on Sunday gave us a free tour as he's my brother's travel agent and therefore extended family. Um, this is just a few shots of Delhi. The, there's a little leaf in front of the red. And our, our classmates started to arrive from around the world. And we were staying at a hotel um, in Delhi uh, based on a British building. Part of it, because of the, Five minutes away was our room uh, classmate who had been our roommate, uh, Prima, who uh, hosted us for our dinner. We did the woman on the far left is a Tibetan woman called, called Doma. And we end up saying that Doma's in. Here's the train called Shitapi. And now you get to hear uh, the announcer coming on shortly. It just gives you a little flavor of the uh, farmland. One of my favorite things is traveling on a train in, in, in India. Pretty nice speed. I've been announcing that the Swalik Hills are coming in view, and this is the first time we've seen the mountains. There's a couple classmates who had not been there in 45 years. Uh, 
we were at uh, for the week. This is the high schools up above. Uh, it's a rampway down to the elementary school. Uh, Ann is one of our teachers, and she's uh, been very active with the alumni, helping organize the, the, the reunions. Uh, so Judy was our main hostess. Uh, and that's our official 69 class flag. Very psychedelic. <laughs> and we, here's the Diodomama's visit. Uh, he has come to Woodstock several times, uh, especially in 1959, when my father invited him. And this is a bookshelf named uh, in honor of my mother. All the books were made, uh, written by alumni. And this, this was very new to have computers. <laughs> spent time boarding uh, the, the high school where my father was the superintendent and my mother worked in the library. That's a matron that stole a book. We married because we weren't supposed to study after hours. <laughs> so we, we were hiding so we could study late at night. This is the main um, hall where we all the plays and concerts and gatherings were held. Recycled uh, materials. This is a state of the art uh, gymnasium. So, this is the first time most of us had seen the, the gym that we've been hearing about for many years. Everything was brought in by. Uh, growing up and had a very traumatic experience with that. So now Rachel is uh, wanting our class to help make, uh, make sure that swimming is taught to all the students. And this is where um, we spent uh, high, uh, high school. I spent three years in uh, this uh, high school girls' dorm. Uh, a lot of memories. Um, this is near the house where I lived for five years. Uh, those, all those people were um, in ho the uh, hospital. So what was unique about this reunion was taking the three-day hike, and going up to about 13,000 feet. For some, those are the only seven people who made it all the way. I got up to about over 12,000. This is a quick shift now. Um, about a week later, uh, Rachel and I flew to Nepal, which is the first time either one of us had been there. There was another graduate from Woodstock School who we were visiting. And this amazing, uh, with the stupa, we happened to check in on the full moon. That was a full moon on the very peak. 
in this, on my birthday. Uh, it was old, but the sunrise was amazing to see the Tibetans doing their traditional praying. I originally selected this just because it was close to the airport and had no idea that it, they went all out decorating the stupa on the night of the full moon. Uh, the new fresh prayer flags, uh, all the uh, Christmas lights were up. Uh, you see the pilgrims are, are walking around uh, clockwise. There were people uh, offering uh, oil lamps, so you'll see that shortly, and feeding the birds, and just a lot of ritual. The uh, very powerful stupa, the uh, people believe that their prayers will be heard. And offering flowers. I don't know, I'm not sure what that is. This is amazing. We just happened to walk into where the Tibetan monks were chanting. We, we don't know if that was just like the full moon. They didn't have anything special to offer. 
Uh, my parents continued to serve for another nine years, but Dad had uh, many contacts. He helped uh, deliver relief supplies whenever there's a drought or a flood. Um, he knew all the <coughs> Methodist bishops. He, he just well connected. Um, he was an educator. Uh, his uh, helped. Uh, uh, self-evaluation project so that Woodstock School and then other schools could be self-accredited. So as we graduated and came, came to America, our credits would be accepted. So there was some unique things that needed. They, were, they also had a um, leopard village that they helped set up. Um, but the majority of missionaries uh, were being sent, either sent back home or not allowed back into India. So now it's um, on the, the goal uh, is about a third Indian, a third international, and a third from North America. But over the last few years, they've had to actively recruit. Uh, so we as alumni are asked to try to help uh, reach other uh, high school students. Uh, there's also a one-year uh, program to try to get students to go for either their junior year or their senior year. My nephew, uh, Carol's son, uh, Chris, went his senior year as, as part of the SAGE program. So there's a, um, and, and as alumni, we are also asked to raise money for scholarships to so that uh, more Indians who can't afford to go, because from an Indian point of view, it's a very expensive school, it's a private school. It's Christian-based. But to the years also, there's more Hindus and, and uh, Buddhists and Sikhs and other religions uh, permitted. Uh, there was, but when we were there, it was a very, very strict um, boarding school. Uh, we, have, we were, had to go to church every Sunday. We had those, we'd get it punished. But anyway, but as, then there are uh, students and staff from Australia, from Korea, from, uh, of course, uh, Tibet and Nepal, uh, many from Europe. Now I see a lot more of um, Malaysia, Indonesia. Um, I have uh, pictures, you know, the, the, the multinational uh, staff and students, and they have a uh, model of the United Nations. Every year, there's some students that take part of the model of the UN. Um, how long does the Dalai Lama get to serve, and how do they choose the new ones? Um, once he's chosen, he serves for life. But um, there's, a, there's, a, well, there's, a very, there, there's a whole movie about the, the current Dalai Lama being chosen. Um, he had to pass through a test to be recognized. The, the, the teeth from the former Dalai Lama, but he was the head inherited. Oh, he had the reincarnated. Yeah, reincarnated as the Dalai Lama. So he and he, as a boy, he, he chose. The, the stick, I think, that belonged to the former Dada Lama, he, he just it proved that he, that he recognized his former self. Yeah, there's a seeking of the spirit. It can't be just, so it's a spiritual leader, not just a liberal. Yeah, it's a it, it could take years. They go on a search and look over young boys. The idea is that they wait for the spirit of the previous Dalai Lama to come into this child, and they have to figure out how the child behaves as to whether that's the one that has the spirit. And it sometimes takes years, and that's why it's a lot of happen to What was controversial, too, is um, that there's a there was a, a poster about a missing, uh, youngest political prisoner is uh, one of the, the, the next set lamas that um, the Chinese apparently have their own Dalai Lama selected. Um, I don't know if I can find this right away. Uh, here, punch, the punch of The 11th P A N C H E N Lama, and there were posters all over the place um, showing that he was the youngest uh, 
um, the world is famous political prisoner. Um, he was born in April 1989. Uh, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, officially proclaimed him as the reincarnation of the 10th Panchen Lama. I think there's different kinds of lamas, is what I'm getting. It's not, so if, if you want to see this poster, I'll cut it. And so yeah, the, the, if the Tibetans don't recognize the, the law that the Chinese are choosing, then that's a problem. Yeah, yeah I, um, I was in existence. I, I just find it overwhelming how they can maintain their own culture. When you, know, you look at that area, it's twice the size of Texas without three million people. And how in the world are you being overwhelmed by the Chinese Whatever, you know, it's just, it's amazing that they still just the idea we're talking about. And that's one of the causes um, that I'm renewed in trying to explain to people uh, is that Americans are suffering so much. Uh, well, it's pretty shocking to see a whole wall of pictures, so probably about over 50 pictures of Tibetans, mostly men who have burned themselves to death to try to bring awareness. And so we need to at least be cognizant of that. That's pretty desperate. So I just see it's after eight. But I just wanted to add the traditions, what the gentleman was talking about, the traditions passed down through these cultures, and they survive, and they, they feed each other if they're just left alone.